what's up guys and welcome back to the channel and today you guys destroy the light goal so i'm going to be releasing part 7 of what if madara uchiha was naruto grandfather yes yeah, so basically what if naruto was madara grandson guys i'm going to release part 7 for you guys today get this one to over 180 likes and you'll be getting part 8 soon as you hit the light goal so yeah, get this one to 180 likes. If you're a new subscriber, comment down below and tell me we almost, almost hit our 2,000 subscriber goal, guys. Just keep on pumping it and subscribing if you're new. So yeah, remember to share this video on your social media platform. And comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. I love to talk to you guys. Yeah, so comment and tell me what you think of this. And go check out my What If Deck Was A Ghoul Part 2. And go check out I did what if Naruto was banished from the village. It's down below under this. Or you can swipe across the playlist. So without further ado, let's get straight into the what if. Start the intro. So, basically in the last part, Naruto has passed the academy and he went to join Team 7. After joining Team 7, Naruto was making his, his Shadow Clone do most of the missions and he was back at his hideout training to get even stronger. Now, he has to go on a mission to bring the bridge builder to Land of Waves. And he met Konohamaru in the last part. So, let's get straight into this new part. Oh yeah, go check on the playlist if you guys want to watch it. Yeah, go check on the playlist. It's about 20 minutes long, the last part. I've left all of the other parts from part 1 to part 6 in the playlist. So go check on it, okay guys? Kakashi tell Team 7 to meet him at the West Gate in 15 minutes. Dismiss, Kakashi said. Naruto appear near to the Leaf West Gate. He found out that he was the first to arrive there. Tazuna was already there. Tazuna was fidgeting nervously when Naruto walked towards him. He feel kinda weird being with Naruto, especially alone because in the last one, Naruto flinged the kunai and he'll stab him right in the face. But Naruto was just doing that as a warning because he was talking crap about them being weak. Naruto looked at the old man and saw him flinching. Naruto think in his mind, damn this is really funny. A few minutes later, Sasuke arrived there, only to see the bridge builder staring and looking at Naruto far away as he can. The bridge builder was in front of Naruto, and every minute he turns to look at Naruto, Naruto was just leaning there on the wall. Sasuke saw how jittery the man was, so he walks towards them and stands like in between the two of them. Kakashi joined them a minute later, then, seconds after Kakashi arrived, Sakura came running towards them, panting. They stop and wait for a moment to let her regain her breath. Kakashi was in front and Tozune was behind him, a few steps behind him. Sasuke was in the middle, Sakura was behind Sasuke and Naruto was behind them watching their back. They've been walking for a while now. Sakura decided to say something. To Zune, he turned his attention to the pink hair girl. What is it? You're from the wave country, right? What about it? He looked at her, but he didn't have any clue why she asked him that. Then, Sakura turned her attention to Kakashi. Kakashi sensei? Kakashi looked up from his book and turned around to face Sakura. What is it? Is there ninjas in the wave country, she asks. No, not in the wave country, he said, but in most of other countries. 
the culture and custom may be different in other countries. Kakashi decided to give his team a speech and while they were walking, they saw a puddle of water in the middle of the road and no other water or watermark was around it. It was just there and the sun was up. Rain hasn't been falling so out that puddle it just settling there. Naruto saw it and he almost laughed because this was a pathetic intent of a genjutsu. As they walked past the puddle, none of them stared at it or even looked at it. Only Kakashi and Naruto paid it a glance. The rest of them just walked by. Kakashi looked back and saw a smirk on Naruto's face. Naruto must have noticed something. That's good. Kakashi thought in his head, let's see who they're after and I want to see how my team will work under pressure. He detected two chakra signatures beginning to move towards them. Two ninjas fly out of the puddle. Sakura, Sasuke and Tuzune were surprised. They quickly run towards Kakashi and wrap their ninja chain around him. What? Kakashi said. Acting surprised, the two ninjas said one down. As the two ninjas start pulling the chain, the chain wrapped around Kakashi squeezed him and ripped him to pieces. Sakura screamed out, Kakashi Sensei! Naruto narrowed his eyes as he noticed something. Oh, so he wanted to test us and see how we will work under pressure if he had really died. The two mixture ninjas run right after Naruto. They wrapped the chain around him and said two down, this is too easy. They squeezed the chain to kill him, but to their surprise, Naruto dissolved into lots of black butterflies. The two ninjas were confused, what is this? Taking advantage of the situation, Naruto appeared behind them. He punched one of the ninjas, pushing, him, pushing the ninja far away from him. Then Naruto turned to the other ninja and he started fighting him in close combat. And the other ninja that Naruto pushed away got up and started walking to Tizuna. He had the intention of killing the bridge builder. Sasuke tried to stop him by throwing a kunai at him but the ninja dodged it. And the ninja approached Tazune and Sakura. Sakura quickly moved front of him with a kunai in her hand as she watched that the ninja was slowly creeping up towards her. She's coming, he said in her head. I have to do it. I have to do it. She keep repeating that in her head. Watching the enemy move even closer to them. Get back. She looked at Tuzine and said get back. And she pointed the kunai at the ninja. Just as the man was moving even closer. A dark shadow figure just appeared in front of him. It was Naruto. Naruto just stopped him with one kunai. The man muttered, damn it, before he saw Naruto's eyes and he faded. What just happened? Sasuke asked in disappointment because he didn't get a chance to fight. Naruto didn't even answer Sasuke's question. As he looked at the boat ninjas on the ground, you can come out now Kakashi Sensei, he said. What are you talking about Naruto? Kakashi Sensei is dead, Sakura shouted. Tears running down her cheeks. Well, not really, Kakashi said as he suddenly used the body flicker jutsu to appear in front of them. What? Sakura and the bridge builder shouted in surprise. Naruto looked at Sasuke and said it seemed that Sasuke isn't surprised by this. He saw no change in the Ochiha, even his form like he's not surprised. Sakura turned around in pure shock. And look where um, Kakashi was just killed and saw pieces of log on the ground. It was a substitution jutsu and mixed well with again jutsu. Thank God she thought. She also heard the bridge below let out a sigh of relief. <sighs> Good job all of you, especially you Naruto. Nice genjutsu by the way, Kakashi said giving an eye smile to Naruto. 
Kakashi thought in his head. So Ryu is teaching him um, Genjutsu. If you guys haven't watched the last part, you will not know about Ryu. So go check out the last part. Ryu is an alter ego that Naruto has created. So go check out the last part. Kakashi is thinking in his head. I never thought that Naruto could use Genjutsu as himself but I guess Ryu is teaching him. I guess he's a really powerful teacher. So let's see how strong Naruto will get because he keep denying to Tertokage that he knows anyone at the name of Ryu. Naruto walked towards the two unconscious ninjas. I will take care of these two. He grabbed the boat ninjas by their wrists and draw them over to a large tree. He pulled out a ninja wire from his pouch and tied the boat of them up to a tree. Kakashi called to the bridge builder and said, I need to talk to you. There was seriousness in Kakashi's voice. He pointed at the two unconscious ninjas. Those guys are Chonin ninjas from the hidden mist. They are ninjas known to keep fighting no matter what. One of the ninjas woke up when Naruto finished tightening the wire. He blinked and he tried to move around before realizing that he was tied up. Did you have a nice nap? Naruto said with a grin on his face. The ninja glared at Naruto. How did you know about her ambush? Because you morons have a lack of common sense, Naruto said. He's right. Look at the weather, Kakashi said. It hasn't been raining in days and a small puddle of water is just there. It shouldn't even exist in this hot weather. It would have evaporated already. Looking down at the two of them, Naruto said, the best genjutsu is the one closest to reality. Kakashi turned to Naruto. Nice philosophy, Naruto. I should really introduce you to Kuronai Sensei. She is one of the main specialists of the Leaf Village. She mostly specializes in genjutsu. Naruto turned and looked at Kakashi and said, Are you talking about the sexy Jonin teacher of Team 8? He asked, getting a nod from Kakashi. Then, you should really introduce me to her. Kakashi giggled pervertedly and said, My, Naruto, I didn't know you were in older woman. I am not really into her, Naruto said, folding his arms and his glancing at Sasuke with his corner of his eye. But, unlike someone, I am a straight teenage boy. I couldn't help it. Kakashi almost laughed. He had clearly understand the hidden meaning behind Naruto's statement. He was indicating that Sasuke was gay. Kakashi let out a small laugh. Both Sakura and Sasuke couldn't help it. What? They, they are both staring at Kakashi and Naruto at their behavior. They didn't understand what the two of them were talking about. But one thing they understand that their sensei and Naruto was crazy. Wait a minute, Tuzune said, interrupting Naruto and Kakashi conversation. Why did you let the brats fight when you knew about these ninjas? He asked and staring at Kakashi. If I wanted to, I could have killed these two easily, Kakashi said. His attitude completely changed, but I wanted to see who was their target. Tuzune sniffed. And he asked Kakashi, what do you mean? Meaning, if they were after you or one of us, Naruto said to Tuzune. Kakashi nodded his head. We haven't heard that there are shinobis after you. Our mission was simply to protect you from thieves or gangs, not real ninja shinobis. If that is the case, this has become at least a B-rank mission. This mission was simple to be for your protection until you completed the bridge. If it was known that ninjas were after you, the mission would have been an expensive B-rank mission. I'm sure you have a reason, but it caused problems when you lie about the mission details. We are now operating outside of our duties, Kakashi said. 
We are not ready for this mission, Sakura said. Let's quit. The bridge builder turned pale. Sakura didn't want to go up against any enemy ninjas and get killed. Maybe we should hear the old man out. Before we quit this mission, Naruto said. He turned his head and looked at the old man and said, talk. Tuzune looked at them and said, you're right. This mission is quite not what you expected. I have a super bad guy coming after me. His name is quite famous. Who? Kakashi asks. Tuzune said, do you know Gatao? He said with hatred in his voice. The name seemed to be familiar. Kakashi trailed off. A crime lord who sells drugs and owns most of these places. He's a big deal in the black market everywhere. Naruto was the one to say this. Everyone turned and looked at Naruto with a weird expression on their faces and they asked, Do you know him Naruto? Kakashi said. Know him? No. But I heard of him. Yes. I have a good source of information, Naruto replied. I see. Kakashi nodded. And what about him? He turned back to sweating Tazune. Actually, Naruto said, I think I know. The wave is a poor country and they need to trade in order to flourish. Gatao must have seen this old man and know that he's going to build a bridge. And if there's a bridge there, it will be much easier to trade going through the bridge. So Gatao must want this old man's head on his wall. Kakashi asked Tuzune, is he right? Tuzune nodded, yes. Naruto looked at Kakashi. And Kakashi glanced back at Naruto. Kakashi thought in his mind, it looked like Ryu is supporting Naruto with a lot of information, Kakashi said. He thought in his mind, he didn't really say it out loud because they don't want they don't want Naruto to know that they are snooping around Ryu because none of them know that Naruto is Ryu after all. Even though Ryu is an enemy, he's clearly impressed by his teaching methods towards Naruto. We are poor, even the few the Lord is. We didn't have the expensive for our B rank mission. I could only afford a C rank mission, Tuzune said. But if you quit now, I will definitely die. It won't be a problem to you if I die. But my grandson would cry for a lot of days if he find out. He said that to get their sympathy. And my beautiful daughter would just hate every leaf ninjas forever. But it won't be your fault, not at all. He turned away from them, hoping for them to continue the mission. This man is a good actor, Naruto thought. Kakashi stretched the back of his head and thought, the problem isn't the money, we are only a Genin team. We should go back to the hidden leaf and Pick a Chunin or a Jonin team for this job. I think we should take this mission, Kakashi Sensei. We are perfectly capable of handling this mission, Sasuke said. He wants a chance to try out his technique in a real battle. Sakura was pretty nervous, but because Sasuke was so brave, she shouted, Yes, I am with Sasuke. Let's take this mission. Kakashi looked at her and he said, in his mind, just a few minutes ago, she wanted to quit and run home. He shook his head and nodded. He looked at Naruto and wanted to hear Naruto's thought in this. Naruto just gave him a nod because Naruto agreed with their decision. Kakashi said, alright, I will send for another joining team back at the Leaf Village. Sasuke was about to say something to progress. But Kakashi cut him up and said, if I don't, I will not accept this mission. Kakashi then summoned his fastest dog to go back to leave and deliver a mission message. Sorry guys. Alright, let's go, Kakashi said. They all walked off and they came up on a, a strange, a strange structure held between two trees inside there. Two individuals were having an important meeting it seemed like. A tall man with bandages covering half of his face, his face launched down in a giant chair. To his left 
was one of his subordinates waiting for his instructions. In front of the two of them was a short fat man with grey hair and sunglasses on. He was in a business suit with sunglasses and it was really dark inside. You fail, the short man shouted at them. What about your idiot ninja's assassin? I thought that you guys were this quick cleanup, but if you're not capable of handling this mission, stop your bitching, the tall man growled as he lifted up a long, heavy sword. He pointed it at the businessman and said, this time, I will go and kill them myself. Are you sure, he said, it seemed that the enemy has now bring some stronger ninjas and they defeat the demon brothers look like without ease who do you think i am the man growled and shout he still pointed his sword at the fat man there's a reason i'm called the demon of the hidden miss i am zabuza meanwhile tozune has led them to a boat to get safe passage across the river all of them was on the boat and the motor were running so they could be attacked in the middle of the ocean by Gato's man. Naruto at the front of the boat was sitting down and staring at the thick fog. There was something odd about this fog, Naruto said. Even if this is a morning fog, it seemed to be really thick. He narrowed his eyes. Someone is using a hidden mist jutsu to create this fog, Naruto said to himself. We should see the bride soon, the boatman said. The way country is in the middle of the bride. The fog clear as the boatman said that, they saw a large unfinished bridge. All of them looked up at it. Naruto said, I am impressed. I didn't think an old, old, drunk old man like you was capable of doing something like this. Tozune looked at Naruto. He was impressed because Naruto told him that, yeah, he said it, thank you, with modesty in his voice because Naruto said he was impressed. He slumped down a bit. It wasn't very easy to build this bridge. The boatman turned to Tazuna and said, we are going to take another route. It will make us harder to spot. We are going to be there in about 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, the boat made its way to the dock and everyone got off. After Tuzune and the boatman exchanged farewells, the boat the group set off again. For the most part, the place was silent, only the breathing of the group being heard. Even Kakashi didn't have a book in his hand because the situation was serious. Naruto suddenly took out shurikens and tossed them into the bushes. What the hell, Sakura shouted. Naruto, stop trying to be cool. Naruto ignored her. He walked past Sakura and walked up to the bush and parted it, only to see a white rabbit shaking with Kuni right top of his head, stuck into a tree. Naruto, supposed to had killed the rabbit. Sakura grabbed it and tried to calm the rabbit down. Shut up, Naruto said. He narrowed his eyes at the rabbit. Kakashi also looked at the bunny. That is a snow rabbit, yet it is spring. What is with the color? This is a rabbit that's been kept in a cage for a substitution jutsu. Takashi looked round once more. Then he said everyone duck, grabbing the bridge builder to the ground. Naruto just simply moves out of the way. The sword came slamming into a tree. And then when they all looked up, a man was on the handle. Kakashi looks up and said, it's Zabuza. But guys, I'm going to end right here. If you want to see part 8 of this and know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification, stay posted, and get this little 1 to 80 like goal, and you'll be getting the next part. But for now guys, I'm out. Peace.